I don't like being in the if business. I don't like being like, well, what if the wondering, the pondering business? I mean, that's bullshit. The conversation you're about to hear with me and Dr. Elizabeth Lindsay, here's what's gonna blow your mind. Elizabeth is a National Geographic Explorer, a TED Talk speaker, and a United Nations Visionary Award recipient. Over the course of the next 20 minutes or so, we talked about the liability of brilliance, being in the if business, lighting a spark in others, and being the pebble rather than the ripple, the power of making things timeless, finding your superpower, why carefulness is the death of brilliance, the power of curiosity, discovering the sport canvas ping pong, how to tell if an artist is lying, the convergence of cultures, the cultural habit that's actually destroying us, how to elevate culture, the role of wiggle room in innovation, and discovering your catalyst. But don't take my word for it. Check it out for yourself. It's so important for people to know that one person sparks a thought in another and all of a sudden something's born that didn't exist before right right and so this is what you're giving me i mean this is what your master class is giving me because it was there were parts of it that were there but all of a sudden it sparked something and they converged right brilliance by itself is kind of like okay until it connects with the human component where the ignition happens, where a fuse is lit, until that okay. ignition occurs, it's simply a nice idea. It's simply, okay, wouldn't it be great if? Well, I don't like being in the if business. I don't like being like, well, what if the wondering, the pondering business? I mean, that's bullshit. Isn't it so much more exciting when you go hey and now you see that spark and that other per individual can now now has that spark and can ignite that spark in others and you get that it's like i mean I, I talked about this talked about this the other day i said too many people are so fascinated with the ripples that they see and they start emulating the ripples well i said wouldn't you rather be the, the pebble that's wow. the ripple? i mean that's this is what you're doing. It's like the igniter, right? It's like the igniter. And it just kindles something in us. Yeah. And all of a sudden, everything is, starts to generate because that's how I've been feeling this pa these past 10 days. You know, I went through your modules and then I was getting to five and I thought, whoa, holy moly, pay attention. And then I started to write things down fast and furiously. And these ideas, these recollections of the Gap campaign from the 90s. And I was saving all of those pictures because I loved, I loved where it was going, where it made people like a Miles Davis cool and iconic. And they were no, not perceived as old and irrelevant, where that could have happened. I mean, we're living in a, a day and age where lots of things become obsolete, but Gap just turned it around. And I thought, whoa, okay, I'm putting it together with your masterclass and thinking how I can reignite this kind of cultural relevance and wisdom. And here's a perfect example. A few years ago, Hermes came out with a beautiful scarf with these sign with these symbols on them. Mm -hmm. What they didn't do was tell any of us what the symbols meant. Right. And I thought, how could they have missed that opportunity? Because the symbols were pretty heavy from my perspective. When when we when women really understood that they're wrapping themselves in something powerful, all of a sudden it takes on a whole different meaning than just wrapping yourself in another pretty scarf. So that's one example of what's possible. What I found out as I was researching further about these symbols is that in South America, when you put on the poncho and there's a diamond shape around you because you put it over your head, what that symbolizes is I am the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. That these people understood that, all of a sudden it shifts the meaning of a simple scarf. So that's what I wanna do. In, in in small and interesting ways that normally 
the dots don't connect. You have these cultures and then you have modernity. But to tell these small stories in ways that make it relevant and sort of interesting yeah. is exciting to me. Well, and 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 circling circling back to that point where I was talking about like like ideas are like oxygen, they're kind of like invisible, but yet without them we cease to exist. It's kind of like it's you can always tell when you're having when something special is happening because all of a sudden people can kind of like they can like spiritually and, and 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 as a being like breathe because now they've got they've got the like they've got the bandwidth shrinking is 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 a disaster for anyone to shrink into themselves or to shrink away from something is a disaster well the opposite of that is either being i mean being present is fine but what if you can expand that's that that to me is like that's that's stage one that, okay you can expand to be as big as you need to be to own that sphere that you're playing in but where the real magic comes in is when you can now expand to that point where now that expansion triggers the expansion of others and now you get yes. you get a, a, a synergy and a, and a, and a domino yes. effect into wider and bigger impact. There's where the magic is. I'm telling you, I am telling you, I am so on fire with what you're teaching. And I really, it's, it's I want to take this part really slowly, like a chocolate or a good sip of something, because there's so much in each one of the questions that you're asking. Right. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can take module six and just expand it right now and really take my time. And so my question to you is, yeah. how do you, like when you're starting to name things and when you're starting to find taglines for things, do you do you just get a whiteboard and just start putting just like wildly whatever comes to mind start putting words up I think it's part of it but that also can become a real um it can become a liability so what I what I did and I kind of discovered it by by accident was I would you know I'd be invited to you know someone's podcast and then they'd, they'd say hey we'd love to have you as a guest I'm like great I would show up and that to me was my playground. That to me was my canvas of, of I'm going to be all in in this conversation. I'm going to listen. I'm going to respond. I'm not going to be careful. Carefulness will be the death of brilliance at every opportunity. So it's like, don't, don't let be, one can be too careful, too cautious, too calculated, too strategic. And it's like, and, and the most magical things have happened when I've just let it rip. That's the thing. So I, I would just say, either get in, get in a conversation where you are really talking, where you can have a great conversation with someone, or you can be a guest on their podcast or whatever. Be in a setting where you have the opportunity to interchange with another so that you're like playing like you're playing, uh, we'll call it canvas ping pong. So it's like, hey, here's what I put on this canvas. They'll toss it over. And then they look at me, hey, blah, blah. And they had their strokes and they toss it back to you. And you just kind of get that, you get that thing. And words and things start to happen. Because what, what are we ultimately dealing with? Let's look at it. We're dealing with universes, right? I'm communicating to you from my universe. You're communicating to me from your universe. We're talking about this universe that we can collectively see and enter in play within. Um, and so the thing is, is that it's those interactions of universes. You talk to any great writer, artist, cinematographer, uh, anyone who's in any creative field. And if they tell you that they didn't get an inspiration from this and an inspiration from that and inspiration from that and merged together just because it seemed like maybe something new and really cool could happen. If they say, no, nah, I don't do that. You know, you're talking to a bald faced liar. 
<laughs> because it happens all the time. <laughs> A brilliant chef happens all the time. A brilliant jeweler happens all the time. A brilliant clothing designer happens all the time. Uh, a brilliant architect happens all the time. Why can't we take that material that I saw on this thing over here and put it over here? That's why I've been very fortunate. I never went vertical, meaning I never, I mean, I could have, but I chose not to. Um, my interests were too broad, but I could have gone, all right, I'm going to do, I'm going to do stuff in just uh, editorial or I'm going to do stuff just in beauty and healthcare products or I'm going to do whatever or entertainment or whatever I could have selected any of those verticals my interests were too broad the advantage of that is that I I'll have a client in Napa Valley I'll have a client in Paris France I'll have a client in the the East Block or or Florida or wherever in industries that are so disrelated and I'll see something and we'll, we'll do something and I'll go why couldn't we take this from something that's a consumable and put it over here to something that might have something to do with cybersecurity? Can something magical occur from that weird, unexpected merging of things? It's, it's how great new dishes of food are created. It's how new art forms are created. It's how new dance forms are created. What the hell was Cirque du Soleil other than taking gymnastics and all other types of performing arts and bringing them together? Yeah. So it's like, it's this bringing together. It's the, why the hell not? I'm going to listen to this over and over again. So please share this recording. And I want to, <laughs> honestly, I want more people to see it because David, that was brilliant. And it, it, it makes so much sense to me. It's the way that I see these convergences of music and art. And what's interesting is, you know, with Aboriginal art, some of the women are sitting down painting while the others are going around them singing and chanting and all of them are considered the artist. Yeah. And basically that's what you're describing. That's where it gets, that's just where it gets exciting. When people ask, why do I do what I do? I love helping people see. And too many people have their eyes wide open and don't see a freaking thing. They're yeah. going on, they're going on autopilot. They're just dealing with the old machinery from whenever. And they stopped showing up. Mm -hmm. They stopped looking, they stopped interacting. They stopped asking why they stopped asking why not. They stopped feeling dangerous to the environment in a good way. You know, instead they, the environment made them shrink back. It's like, wait a second, you're a vital integral part of this thing called life. Don't dilute it. Don't dumb it down. Don't be so freaking tentative that you live a, a, a that, that anybody lives a life of just tentative moments until they freaking die oh it's like freaking hell i mean literally i mean i mean i mean you know and, and what percentage you know enough people i know enough people what percentage of people are li literally living that day to day little tentative gestures to see if maybe possibly they could do something that possibly doesn't offend someone that's not a life that's a freaking prison sentence be vital be dynamic just show up be willing to make a freaking mistake, you know, because you may discover something that can absolutely inspire just populations, you know, elevate culture. Why the hell not? <laughs> I, what? I, I didn't. So glad this is recorded. <laughs> this has to be shared. Honestly, that was so good. It makes me feel brave listening to you. I mean, honestly, to the kid that was raised in a plantation community and taught never stand out, never speak up, never make waves. It's a dangerous place. Then to listen to these words is so liberating to me. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'll share this because I think it's a an important conversation that people need to hear. I'll do the same. Yeah. It's an important conversation. What you just shared that 
that piece that you were talking about, I just want to just condense it right down to a tight on you saying these things and just writing a post for people to listen to this it was pure genius. There's that, there's the give and take right here in action. What we're talking about is there's the give and take. There's the, you know, there's being a pebble, being a pebble, being a pebble, being a pebble and, and rippling all over each other. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That was so good. That was so good. Okay. So that's where you start. That's when you're playing canvas ping pong is when these ideas start to formulate around the taglines and around the words. Yeah, it's like, yeah, there's, there's gotta be enough wiggle room. Usually it's it's too preemptive. The thinking tends to be oftentimes too preemptive. I'm always the, the guy that's outside of that little box that someone has set for themselves. And I'm going, well, what about this? And they peer out, they, they kind of, that little, little box, curtain box that they print and they kind of like peer and they go, oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> and, it's like, and it's like, you know, but, but who the heck put up the freaking little curtain box? It's like, yeah. come on, you know, yeah. it's kind of bright. Yeah, it is. look at the other side. Whoa, it's everywhere. <laughs> Whatever is a good catalyst for you to go, well, what, why not? What if? And that's why, and that's why in module six, I share as many stories as I do. And then I would, I would definitely encourage delve into module seven, just very, very, just give it to yourself knowing that okay. after seven, you can now go back to six. The reason being is because okay. six exposes you to, to like tons of like, just gets a lot of juice flowing. Like, wow, tackling this and tackling that and da -da 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 -da. on the language level. The other one then does it on the hitting you on all the other sides, like colors and visuals and this and that and the other. So, I mean, you may go, you, you I would say finish seven and then you're going to go, holy crap. And now you're going to go back to six with even more because you know, because now you know where six can lead. Right. So that, you okay, know, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. I'll do seven. And I'll go back to six. Cause I thought I don't want to jump into seven because I want to go back and just right. sort of simmer in this, but right. you're right. I can go back because yeah, there's a lot to take in. And it always amazed me that how much people notice that I say it at the end of the book, Brandon, eventually I say, now that you've read the whole thing, you're now going to want to go, holy crap. I can now read it with a whole new layer of context. Mm -hmm. And people, yeah. you know, so many people have told me they've read the book two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Each time it just amplifies and amplifies and amplifies because it gets deeper yeah. and deeper and deeper. They look at more, they perceive more. So now they're coming to the book with more comprehension, more context. And so I think that's what's going to happen. I mean, do seven, just wear flame, fl you know, flame retardant <laughs> clothing because I, I don't want you to like burst into like, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> Because, you know, it, it will lighten you up. I see how excited and just lit up you are that it'll happen even more. Well, thank you. I mean, and, and you know, David, thank you for not giving up on me because I, you know, had really, I was giving up on myself. And you said, ha -ha, I'm going to be on your ass. I'm going to... You're going to check in with me every day. You're going to do two hours every day and I'm going to track you and I am not letting up. And I thought, wow, I've never seen anybody care that much. Wow. Well, I'm sorry that you had not, but I'm glad <laughs> I did. Listen, <laughs> there's a first for everything. And this one was mine, a teacher and a mentor and a coach that says, you know what? This is a pain in the ass that I have to come back around three times, but I am going to do it and I am going to stay on you. And I thought, whoa, if someone cares that much, I'm going to dive in and I'm going to do this and I am going to keep my word. And man, the, as I started to, I thought, whoa, whoa, just like peeling this one, peeling this one. All of a sudden I saw this, you know, nature's, you know, nature's protein bar was like whoa really true fire really i mean come on it's like oh thank you 
First of all, you're very welcome. And it is my pleasure. And this, this, what's happening here, what I'm looking at right here in front of my eyes, this moment is why I do what I do. Because I was unwilling to give up on this. This is why I did it. So. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank Dr. Elizabeth Lindsay for being awesome, for really shining a light wherever she is, and the impact that she has upon people and cultures across the globe. If this inspired you as much as it inspired me, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much. Keep shining.